Good day and welcome to this Food Systems Summit Global Dialogue titled Sustainable Food Systems, Nature Positive Food Systems for a Healthy Planet and Healthy People. My name is David Navarro and I'm really delighted to be the curator of this global dialogue uh, and I will be helping you through the process. And right at the beginning, I would like to tell you that this is co-convened by Dr. Agnes Kalabata, who is the United Nations Secretary General Special Envoy for the September 21 Food Systems Summit. And it's also co-convened by Inga Anderson, Executive Director of the United Nations Environment Programme and somebody who I've had the opportunity to work with on and off for a number of years. And so it's really lovely, Inga, to be connected with you again. I'm just going to give you a short introduction to how we're going to run today's global dialogue. First of all, I want to stress that we have to have some housekeeping rules if these are going to work. My job is to try to make sure that the whole proceedings stick to time. And there are many moving parts in, in a dialogue. And so you will see me gently encouraging people to come together to organize themselves as, as your cur curator. Uh, that's what I shall do. But I'm also going to tell you a bit about process. Now we're going to record this. Actually, we're doing more than that. We're live streaming it. But we're only doing that for the beginning part because the actual dialogues themselves, which take place in small discussion groups, are absolutely private. They're held under Chatham House rules. And that means that no remark that is made in a discussion group can be attributed to the individual who makes it. So one can talk about the general nature of the discussion, but saying David Nabarro said dot, 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 just doesn't do. And that is key to the dialogue process that we're trying to encourage. Because we want all those with a stake in the issue to have a chance to express their perspective, but they need to be able to do it without being frightened that something is going to happen to them as a result of speaking out. So that's at the heart of the dialogue process, Chatham House rules and safety. I'm also asking you to help us because we're doing dialogues using uh, a, a, a Zoom platform. Uh, we're used, frankly, to doing them face-to-face, -face, and we, we've got familiar with face-to-face, -face, but now there are certain basic rules about Zoom. First thing, please make sure that the name that is coming in front of your image on the Zoom is the name with which you registered. This is really important because otherwise the moving people into the discussion groups becomes a very, very difficult process. So get the name right. And if if we think the name is wrong, we will bombard you with messages saying, get your name right. Uh, but it's easier if you do it. Secondly, keep your microphone muted. And ideally, keep your camera off during the plenary sessions. But when you go into your discussion groups, please Put your camera on and please remember to unmute yourself when you speak. This is really important. In the discussion groups, camera on if you possibly can. Obviously, if your bandwidth is poor and we know that there's been a huge damage to the global internet in the last 24 hours, so you may have problems with staying connected. And that means, of course, you improvise. But it's basic principle in discussion groups, video on. And the main part of the event will be in discussion groups and uh, you'll be invited to go in and have the discussion, which will be with a facilitator and it's 50 minutes shorter than we like, but that's life. Um, and then you'll come back into the plenary after the discussion groups. So be prepared for that shift. And I tell you, Zoom is unkind. Once the time has come for you to return, you don't get the chance to linger around by the coffee and have a cup, no way. You are in instantaneously and you can often be cut off mid-sentence. 
Just want to say that we are really enjoying preparing for the Food Systems Summit in September. And we are really enjoying the opportunity to be involved in so many dialogues. And there are lots because we've understood that for systems change to happen in a way that actually is meaningful, it's necessary to bring all the stakeholders in the system into the change process. And the best way to do that is through multi-stakeholder, diverse, engaged dialogue that's well facilitated and well structured. Well, we're trying to offer that here. And we do see this as contributing to system shift and in particular to enriching the work on food systems with all the sustainability issues that you're going to bring in through this dialogue. So it's a real contributor to system shift. And we, of course, in dialogue, we welcome divergence. There's no pressure on people to agree if they absolutely don't want to agree. The divergence is part of the story. Now, the focus of this dialogue is the interface between the environment and food systems. Now, in our definition of the environment today, we're including climate, biodiversity, and all aspects of nature. And we're looking at the synergies between them, as well as the tensions that occur. And all of us know that these tensions are sometimes extremely intense. And that's why we've learned in planning this global dialogue that it is seen by many to be an absolutely vital issue for the future of people and planet. So here's what's gonna happen. Very shortly, Inga Anderson and Agnes Calabata as co-conveners will make introductory remarks. Then Massimo Bottura, UNEP Goodwill Ambassador, will give his keynote speech. Then we will go into breakout rooms. Then we will come back to plenary. And then there will be a wrap up and conclusions by Susan, Dr. Susan Gardner, Ecosystems Director for UNEP. Everybody, I do get titles wrong and just send me a blast in the chat if I've missed got your title wrong, your pronunciation wrong, misaddressed you. Uh, we want to try to get that right. And always I will try to introduce people full name and title uh, and then move to a more familiar means for when we have conversations. And so with that, I pass to Inga Anderson, UNEP Executive Director for her introductory remarks to our dialogue. Inga, with thanks to you, I pass you the mic. Thank you so much uh, to you, David, and to my dear friend, Agnes, uh, who is uh, just fearlessly leading for the Food Systems Summit. And of course, to Massimo Bottura, who is a, a global ambassador for UNEP, and we're very, very proud to have him here. But then I was skimming through the pages of these wonderful participants, and I saw so many friends. I saw Yolanda, Paban, Sitani, uh, Yugratna, Justin, and many, many more. Um, so can I just say that all of these voices that we know, they're really needed, and I know that Agnes, who is the and maybe I can ask the person who has got his mic open to kindly close, the, the, the uh, Agnes who's leading uh, for the Food Systems Summit uh, will really be wanting to hear your, your voices. But look, I mean, we've arrived at this point where we all know that sustainable food systems, that's a must. Um, we in UNEP, we speak about this triple planetary crisis. And I'd like you to sort of take that away with you the crisis of climate change, the crisis of biodiversity and nature, and the crisis of pollution and waste. These three are really pulling away the very rug under our feet. And we need to tackle all of these three to achieve this, the 17 SDGs. We all know we are hurtling towards this 9 billion people on this good planet by 2050. And we understand that FAO tells us that if we are going to meet uh, the SDG 2, uh, as well as all the other SDGs, we need to deal with inequity, we need to deal with food, we need to deal with food systems, and transformation of that food systems, it's not just on the nice to have list, it's a matter of survival now. Um, on the biodiversity side, we know from IFBES, which we at UNEP are proud to host, that that here we are seeing 
agriculture and food systems being the primary driver of species loss. We know that 85% of our species are threatened with extinction. We understand that agricultural expansion has been, uh, uh, you know, into 70% of, of project, projected loss of terrestrial biodiversity caused by agriculture. And we know very well that 90% of our, our fish stocks are overexploited or fully exploited. That's on the biodiversity side. On the pollution side, in the last 50 years, fertilizers, chemicals, pesticides, as well as conversion of natural ecosystems for crop production or pasture has been that principal cause of habitat loss. Um, and we all understand about antimicrobial. And I think if we didn't, we have learned a lot about the linkages between health and uh, our own health and nature in this last year. And obviously, we all know that meat production has increased by 250% in the last 50, 60 years. So, and this oft repeated point that if food waste were a country taking on Lulu CF, it would be the third, third largest emitter. So we're throwing away food, we have inequity in food access, and we are still encroaching into wild spaces. So in stepping into today's discussion, I'd like to encourage everyone to think big because tackling this is not in the small department. It is really big, but big that transform, translates into policy actions at the micro level. But think big, think transformational because time is now for transformation at the country level at the community level that will add up to the global level. This dialogue is really an opportunity to ensure that food and food systems are mainstreamed into the climate convention, into biodiversity, and into the desertification convention. So we need to think about transforming our diets. In UNEP, we're not so shy about saying this. Um, we have to stop intensification of agriculture, and we need to continue and, and that continued conversion we have of, of ecosystems to crop production. We can't continue doing that. We've already altered 75% of the terrestrial surface of the planet, right? Um, and we need to have concrete action on dietary change informed by national and cultural context, and of course, a reduction in food waste. And that's an honest conversation we have. I've gone out and said, we all want steak for dinner, at 9 billion, it will not compute. So let's have a conversation. If we all want food that comes from the other side of the planet, transported on carbon intense transportation, it will not compute. If we all want chemical based agriculture, our waterways and our soils will be polluted. So let's have an adult conversation around this. But so that's the first point. We need to transform diets, but we also need to protect more of nature, restoring converted lands. It's, uh, and, and, and not having um, uh, so much land conversion and restore and get it back to working landscapes. And finally, we need to think about how do we incentivize positive action, positive agriculture? How do we make natural farming the obvious thing? What kind of reductions in, in chemicals, in pesticides, in fertilizers can we do what, what are we going to do with UNIA Resolution 414 that dealt with sustainable nitrogen management? How are we going to get to that point where anthropogenic reactive nitrogen, which is lost, 80% of it lost into the marine, into the air, into the water, into soil, is no longer the case? Because we understand that affects the environment, but it also affects our health. How are we going to reform subsidies? WTO needs to land the, uh, the marine, uh, the fishery subsidies negotiations. But beyond that, what are we willing to do? Because we have to arrive at a nature-friendly biodiversity supporting farming. But remember this, farmers are never, ever the enemy. They are part of the solution. So how can we make sure that those farmers feel that responsibility and are encouraged and incentivized by policies to be part of that solution. So I really hope that with this dialogue, we can kickstart this process to resolve these very difficult issues, yeah. complex systems, and I encourage everybody to very much. Wonderful. David, wow.
So I'll well, hand it back over to you. No, no, I'm, I'm just I'm saying here, here, and just super happy. I was just listening to you say, make it add up, think big, mainstream, transform, shift, urgent, and then really making, as you said at the end, make it the obvious thing to do. I want that to be my slogan now. Make it the obvious thing to do. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Inga. And thank you for joining us and for offering the UNEP co-convening here, which has been so brilliant. Through you, thanks to your staff. And now to Dr. Agnes Calabata, who is the co-convener, who is in this unenviable position, I think, of pulling together the planning for a first ever United Nations Secretary General Food System Summit. Dr. Calabata, you have the floor, welcome. Thank you, David. <clears throat> thank you, David, for those introductory remarks. And, and thank you, Inga, for accepting to host with us uh, to ex uh, explore the interdependence between climate, biodiversity, and food systems. Uh, of course, and the, the connection and, and linkages to um, sustainable development goals. I want to highlight three things here that I believe uh, things that we must always, not just today, always think about. Our ecosystem is degrading very fast and our, our food systems, unfortunately, are not designed to avoid degrading. This biodiversity degradation, actually our food systems are encouraging biodiversity degradation. They're designed to cause biodiversity degradation. So we need to rethink our food systems. There's no question about it. The time has come for us to do that. The degradation, of course, is further made worse by climate change. And uh, this is eroding everything that we care about from genetic, uh, good genetics that have helped us in the past in terms of innovation, but also that have been very critical to building our resilience and could be very critical to building our resilience going forward. So we even probably have no idea what we are losing, right? It's possible that we are sitting in some of the biggest losses of our life and we don't even know. Today I was uh, reading through one of the newspapers here in Kenya and I can't tell you how many pieces, how many articles in a small newspaper of about 20 pages that is about climate change, biodiversity, the pivots that we need to do. So it's becoming very clear to everybody that we need to, to shift. So for me, the key message for this meeting is we are at a decision point. And in that decision point, we need to dialogue as we are doing today. We need to share knowledge <clears throat> and we need to think through what action looks like. How do we need to act? And how do we agree on the type of actions we take forward? That's why we have dialogues as part of a critical part of the Food System Summit. To give people an opportunity to share information, to give people an opportunity to think about local context, and to give people an opportunity to think about what is happening across the world and how we are all being impacted. We have also, from an action perspective, we also have action tracks led by some of the most brilliant minds of the world and bringing in a lot of people from all walks of life. And what they've been able to do is bring in, really gather all sorts of solutions from all of us ideas that could transform our world. So as we go into this dialogue, let's use it as an opportunity to understand what is available, what has come through, and what it is that we can use to address this particular challenge we are talking here about today, biodiversity loss and addressing the challenge of climate change. So the dialogue provides the opportunity for us to really review some of these things. We have an opportunity to look at the synergies between what UNEP is doing and other pieces of work and areas where UNEP has worked, uh, whether it is around um, COP26, advancing COP26, around the work with UNEA, around the different conventions that UNEP is advancing, but also around the Convention on Biodiversity. We need to work together. We need to understand the place and role of food systems and how this can help advance um, what is going wrong here. So I want to conclude with leaving you two messages here. Let's use this dialogue to think through how we can come together to cause systemic change in our food systems. 
Change in one place is not enough. It has to be some a change that comes together from different directions to help us to move this complex system. And that will only happen if we start thinking about what type of coalitions we can build for nature, how we can come together for nature, how we can come together for people uh, in, that, uh, in that whole perspective. So we have an opportunity again using the Food Systems Summit to do that. My last, last point, David, is um, we've learned through these dialogues, David, that um, we have an opportunity to talk to each other. I don't know why we haven't done it before these dialogues. <laughs> sectors coming together to have a conversation around what is important. Can we assure post the summit and as we're going to the summit that this is going to be business? This is going to be how we do business. How do we not talk to each other on things where we need each other to be able to come through? So this business of having conversations as ministries of agriculture, as ministries of environment, as is, this is an opportunity to completely break away with that and come up with a new way of doing business. And I hope that that gets reflected in what you're doing today. Yeah. And wish you good meetings. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Calabatus. Dialogues leading to surprising connections that are incredibly powerful and have the power to change us all for the good. And it's really an absolute delight to be working with Agnes Calabata on this process. It's the most stimulating experience I've had in my professional life. Thank you for the chance to do this. Massimo Bartura. He's an absolutely household name in Italy. He owns Osteria Franciscana in, Mo in Modena. He's a three-star Michelin chef. He and Lara Gilmore, his wife, started Food for Soul, which actually runs inspiring social and cultural initiatives, but made from the food we throw away. And I mean, he's setting up restaurants, referterios, in uh, underused spaces where people can come together, even though their social and economic vulnerability wouldn't have them anywhere near a three-star chef normally. But they're welcomed. They're served free meals, but free meals that are nutritious and healthy and that are made with ingredients that would otherwise have been thrown away. Massimo, thank you for coming. You have the floor. Hi, everyone. Hi, David. Thank you, David. And uh, thanks the uh, United Nations Environment Programme for the invitation. Actually, the Michelin star are four, because uh, since uh, November, I received also the green star, the sustainable star, that is extremely important for me. And uh, I'm very Such proud. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honored to be here as a part of, uh, as a goodwill ambassador, of course, and uh, more as a part of the good news. Change is coming. You know, we are all part of this change. And uh, we have the opportunity to lead uh, a new era, to reshape uh, how we live, work, and do business together. I want to share a powerful message from uh, the 1962 film La Rabbia by the Italian uh, philosopher and filmmaker Pierpaolo Pasolini. He was writing, when the classic word is exhausted, when uh, all the farmers and artisans have died, when uh, there are no more fireflies, bees and butterflies, when industry has made the cycle of production unstoppable, then our history will be over. Well, last night I went out in the field to check our beehives. The bees were asleep. Instead, I saw hundreds of fireflies. I haven't seen fireflies uh, like that in 20 years. Why, why 
have the fireflies came back. Because after one year of uh, pandemic, there is less pollution and the air is cleaner. This is the proof that nature has the incredible ability to restore itself if you give it a chance. When I began my career in the hospitality industry 36 years ago, I never imagined that I would raise my voice to call out the urgency for change. Our food system are directly connected to the health of our environment. The way we produce food, the way we consume food, and the way we discard food. There are 7.5 billion people on Earth. We produce food for 12 billion people. We use energy, water, and human capital. And then what we do? We burn it or we throw it away the excess. 33% of the food we produce, while 1 billion people around the world are food insecure. Food has an incredible power, not only to restore the environment, but to cure humanity. We all need to eat to survive. Food is a great connector. It's a universal language. It's a, we, around the table, we are equals. Even more importantly, around the table, we are together. As the German artist Joseph Beuys would say, around the table, we are the revolution. If uh, each one of us modifies our daily food habits, how we shop, how we cook, how we eat, by local, by seasonal, and buy just what you need, we will eat better and we will help the world. For Pope Francis said in the beginning of the pandemic, we thought we were staying healthy in the world that was sick. The pandemic was just a wake up call to understand just how unhealthy our world had become. Can we reimagine our food system that uh, are more equitable and sustainable? Yes, 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 we can. At Food for Soul, we believe in radical social change that can happen. When we unite, when we become more knowledgeable, when we change our daily habits, starting in our own kitchen. What we do is simple. We stop the change of food waste by... Okay, your um, internet's gone not so good, Massimo. Uh, and just a key point in your speech. Can you hear me? Well, well, everybody, we're, we're, this is what happens occasionally in Zoom moments. Um, I, I, could the organisers um, just send a message to Massimo saying, "Well, we can't hear him at the moment," and so we'll we'll move on. I think, and um, uh, I know he has to leave quite soon, so he may not be able to come back. Um, thank you, uh, but I mean, what a speech! What a man, electrifying stuff, um, particularly because he stresses that because we all have a relationship with food, this gives us an opportunity through food to interact uh, in remarkable ways. And I think that that gives us an excellent start for today. I'd like to thank on your behalf, Inger Anderson uh, and uh, Agnes Calabata and Massimo Bottura. I'd like now to just set the scene for this global dialogue. And so bear with me while I take you through what we're going to do. The key point about the dialogue process is that 
we actually put you into your discussion groups because we believe that actually ensuring diversity means that we're more likely to have um, we're more likely actually to have a really constructive conversation. So you are allocated to the groups. You are asked not to give statements. And we remind you for a second time that Chatham House rules apply. So please, no photographing your screens and then tweeting out identifying names, no recording and be very careful on social media how you deal with this dialogue. It's not we want to be secretive, it's just to create a safe space where people can speak as they want to. Uh, Massimo, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I want to say to you, Massimo, that was the most amazing electrifying speech and we managed we, to get, we got 90% of it, I'm sure, I need to give you our blessing to move on to next appointment. Thank you very much indeed, Massimo, for being with us. I'm sorry that the internet has really packed up and we can't pick up the words. Sorry for that. Okay, everybody, here are the discussion groups that we're working with. And there are going to be 10 of them. There's one on behavior change and the two on behavior change and sustainable food consumption. The first one looks at healthy diets, nutritious food and new opportunities for farmers. And they're, they're appearing on the slide now. I hope you can see them. The second looks at food loss and waste. Massimo's point, behavior change and circularity. Have Massimo's words ringing in your ears in that group. The th then we go into two, two groups looking at climate and nature positive food production. There's a group on deforestation free supply chains. There's another group on oceans, waterways and aquatic foods. Uh, then there's two groups on ecosystem restoration for nature and people. One is on integrated land management and ecosystem respiration. And then the second is on urban farming and community involvement. And then we've got two groups on sustainable and resilient recovery. Again, what Massimo said, the, the actual transformation that we're working for. And on that one, we've got a group seven on one health approach and group eight on valuing nature. And then we've got two groups on governance and human rights. Group nine, linking food systems and environmental governance and group 10 on right to food and earth rights. Now, facilitators who are some of the most experienced people in the world on these issues have been identified for the groups. The facilitators are listed uh, in the, the slide that you've got. And these facilitators will not only be responsible for making sure that in your groups, you're able to stick to the discussion subjects, they will also be involved in the feedback afterwards and uh, I will depend on them hugely. As well as having facilitators for each group, we've also got the resource person from UN Environment. And we've sometimes we've also got an additional person who's a note taker. This is to liberate your facilitators so they've got the greatest possible time. Now, we're just coming to the end of our live stream. We're going into the discussion. So I'm now going to ask that the organizers move the discussions into the discussion groups. Uh, make sure please that the facilitators are in their right rooms. I'll come into the discussion groups and try to meet with the facilitators individually during the discussion. But now facilitators, this is what you've been pre preparing for. I wish you well, you are the absolute um, vital people now in this process. So facilitators, good luck and discussants, please enjoy the discussion groups. I'm now going to talk a little bit to those of you who are in the live stream audience. Thank you for coming. You are joining a process that is part of the preparations for the United Nations Secretary General's Food System Summit 2021. The whole idea of this process is to invite 
diverse stakeholders to come and explore challenging issues in the future of food systems. There are independent dialogues, many hundred of them happening all over the world. There are member state dialogues organized by national governments, again happening all over the world. More than 128 countries are doing them. And then there are global dialogues like this one happening on multiple issues, at, coming at a, at a rate of about one every two weeks between now and the summit. And this is going to make sure that the summit is an opportunity for all concerned to identify the pathways that they need to follow in order to get food systems to where they need to be by 2030. And that's why we're doing the dialogues, because you can't bring everybody together unless they've got a space to explore with each other. Now, we do ask that these processes are held under the rules of privacy, because for a dialogue to work, people need to be able to speak their minds. And often speaking your mind is difficult if you are nervous about what somebody else will do with what you say. And we can't automatically protect people against being stigmatized in this way. So instead we say absolutely no attribution in the Food System Summit dialogues. We can still have public segments like we're doing now with this Facebook Live session, but the actual dialogues have to be in a space where the person can feel that they can speak their mind without the possibility of having retribution. Really important. I hope you all accept that and find it okay. If you don't, please be in touch with us because we're very happy to talk about this. There's nothing secret in the summit. And indeed, we do believe that people need space for privacy but we also believe, believe that we need to be able to describe this and to explain it. So you can going to be able to read the feedback from this session and from all the other Food System Summit dialogues that we know about. When it, this feedback is uploaded onto the Dialogue Gateway website, which is www.summitdialogues, or one word, .org. And actually we invite all of you to get involved because you can hold your own dialogues. You can register to organize an independent dialogue. You can organize it and you can feed back on it and you are then contributing to the summit. And you can then engage in the digital food system summit community, which is there to enable you to be part of the revolution. And uh, here's what you do. You go to www.foodsystems or one word dot community. It may not, you may have to introduce https colon forward slash forward slash. And I'm sorry for that. But if you search on food systems community, you'll find this. And food systems dot community is the digital space where we can all talk. With that, I think we come to the end of the Facebook Live part of the dialogues. Thank you very much for being with us. Please stay in touch. And remember, this summit is designed to be as accessible as we can make it. And please use what you see on the various websites as your entry point for coming in to the process and be with us as much as you can. Thank you very much indeed.